Hi, this is Annie Grace, and welcome to this Naked Mind podcast. And today I'm super excited. I have Jess, and I was just on Jess's podcast. Hey. Yes, you were. (laughs) (laughs) And you rocked it. Like podcast sisters. Yeah. I'm so excited to hear your story and share it with everybody. And I feel like when when I'm doing all the talking, I don't get to do enough listening. So I'd love it if you just kind of, I don't know, take us all back to to the beginning for you. Where did it all start? Oof. Okay. Yes. Back to the the beginning. Um, So I was a full-time DJ. I was living in LA. I mean, I still am. I'm kind of, I'm back and forth, but um, still I mean, are a DJ or still are living in LA. Still are living in, in LA. Awesome. I'm between Vancouver and LA, so yeah. Um, but but DJ, I'm like pretty semi. Just I'm retired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Retiring that old girl. Um, but yeah, so I was living that life. You know, I was living in the fast lane. I was partying. I was getting paid to party and play other people's music. Like, it was kind of ridiculous. Yeah, that sounds um, <laughs> Yeah. And I knew, I knew probably at least 10 years ago that I had issues with alcohol. Um, I just thought that it, it was my age or I was supposed to be doing this or, oh, I didn't go to college. So this is what people do in college. No, Jessica, no, no. So I, I knew I had this issue and I would be kind of in and out of AA, you know, when I'd go on those benders or like crazy nights, I'd be like, okay, I need to like humble myself and go to a meeting or go to something or cry on someone's shoulder. It was all like, you know, very self-fulfilling. <laughs> Yeah, I was that girl. I was that party DJ girl. So fast forward, this kind of kept going. It didn't. And so you would, you would go and just, you know, to feel better, to feel like you were doing something about it kind of thing. Like you're just kind of like, okay, I'm ticking that box. I'm doing something. Yeah. Yeah. I totally. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm making an effort. Right. And then I would be like, oh, well, I, I, I mean, I didn't relate to anyone there. I never really put in an effort. And by the time, like a couple of years later, when I was like, okay, whoa, like this is a major issue. Like there is some weird stuff going on. Like I got pregnant and I'm a lesbian. So, <laughs> so wait, what? <laughs> yeah, you do the math. Um, <laughs> yeah, like weird stuff was happening. Like this stupid stuff. Oh, and I was in like a committed living with someone relationship at the time when I got pregnant. So you don't remember getting pregnant? Well, I mean, parts of it, but not really. So I remember it who divine. I was. It wasn't, it wasn't divine care. What, what is it called? Immaculate Madonna's. No, 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 no. I wish. <laughs> oh my God. That would have been like so much easier kind of, but not really. But yeah. Um, no, I was acting out. I was just being a total asshole. And um, oh, can I swear? Or... Yeah, sure. Okay. I put explicit on all of them just to cover myself because I okay. never know. Rock I on. never know what's coming out. Yeah. <laughs> <My mouth. laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, no, I was just hurting myself, p- other people, like left, right, and center, like just had no regard for anyone. Anyone. No responsibility, just no respect. And it sucked. It really sucked when I came to and realized it. Um, so when I f- kind of figured that out, I did start going to a-, a meetings like seriously. And I did kind of try and step into it. And um, oh, it wasn't for me. It just didn't make me feel good. So I did, a, you know, a couple months of, on my own and I was go- like going through it, felt pretty good. And then one morning I woke up and I'm like, holy shit, I want like a Desperate Housewives glass full of white wine at like 10 a.m. Like, what? And so I'm like, okay, something is like wrong, like not wrong here, but something is. Because your drinking before had been party drinking. Yeah. It hadn't been 10 a.m. wine drinking. So this was new. For well, you. nothing ten, nothing before noon. <laughs> 
Let's just say that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I love to drink alone and clean my house and just, yeah, turn off everything in the world. And yeah, it was, I was amazing. But also like love to party drink and it was free and no one said no. Um, so when this, when this morning like arose and kicked in, I'm like, what? Like I was doing so good. Like, where did this come from? And then I started, of course, as we all do, getting on the old World Wide Web. And at this time, it was also around the time where my friends were like, okay, dude, like, when are you going to stop? Like, when are you just going to like become a drinker again? That sounds so silly to say this out loud. But when are you going to start drinking again? Like, like, what is this? Enough is enough. We're done. I'm like, I'm not done. This is a lifestyle change. This is not a phase. This is not a cleanse. This is me. This is happening. Like, this is who and I so am you, now. Were you having that conversation or was that conversation kind of mentally? It in your was head? mentally in my head. Totally. But they were physically asking me, like, okay, like, what's going on? And so I think that's what spurred the, oh, this can be a huge glass of wine. And so were you we still tell- actively working as a DJ at this time? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so, I started Googling like how to tell your friends you're not going to drink. Bullshit. So this lovely picture of like this wiki how two guys in like muted greens (laughs) at a bar were like, oh, just tell your friends that you have to run a marathon in the morning. (laughs) What? Uh, eh, What? Number one. I'm not a liar. Number two, I don't freaking run unless I'm being chased. So no. And so I'm like, okay, there's nothing like motivational or inspirational or even like that look cute. Like I am a very visual person. I like pink. I like oranges, yellows, blues, like bright, like make me feel good. Like make me feel like, you know, there's a a day past tomorrow you know there's there's something that is is gonna um there's a light at the end of the tunnel basically you know um and i wasn't finding any of that everything was very like oh just don't drink or like everything was very blue or grays and i did not that did not turn me on and and a lot of stuff was like fear-based too so like Mm -hmm. if you drink you will die i'm like yeah no shit deborah like hello so I I was just like what the heck like what do I do I don't like resonate with any of this stuff out there sorry maybe I should turn my mail off um so I created it for so awesome I just started it and I'm like what like I just need like a guide, like someone to like take me through their journey and tell me like, okay, it's going to be like all rough and then it's going to get a little rougher and then it's going to be smooth and then it's going to be really, really rough. And then, you know, just like the real stuff, but not, don't scare me. Right. Don't, don't make me feel like if I do it this way, I'm going to like fall off the edge of the cliff and that's it. And it's over. Like, don't scare me. Because I will come right back at you. And I can be pretty scary if I want to be. <laughs> so that's what I did. I started out, a sober girl's guide started out um, as kind of, I don't know, a little collection of blogs of stuff that I was going through and, you know, little tips and tricks that I found helped me. And then it grew. Oh, okay. This is where it kind of progressed. My friend was like, reading my blogs she's like you know like they're really they're good they're interesting but because i know you like i know how sarcastic you are i know your tone and i feel like anyone else reading them would be like who the hell is this woman she's weird and wouldn't get me like wouldn't understand my personality and she's like that is what i guess makes you interesting is your personality and it's what makes everyone interesting duh Uh, so she's like you should do a podcast and so that's when we progressed into a podcast which has been the best thing in the world like that honestly I 
probably before each podcast, I don't want to do it. I find a way to back out and I'm like, oh, you know, I'll just reschedule or something because I'm a baby and I get nervous. But after every podcast episode, there's something that I hear that I needed to hear for that day. Oh, that's so good. And that's how this whole kind of thing started. Like I was just writing because I needed to write. I needed to write and, and get this all out of me. And I needed, I needed even like from stupid little quotes that are just there on paper, but I needed to hear it that day. So if I reposted it or put it up on this or, you know, whatever medium, it all started with me. Okay. It was a selfish thing. I'll just admit it. I needed to hear this stuff. So if people related to it, cool. If they didn't, cool. It was helping me. And that's kind of how it has progressed. Now, um, I went back to school. I got my, co my coaching certification and I coach women through their recovery. So I do that through two ways. We do group coaching every month. And they're really small, like intimate groups, just a couple of ladies. Um, and I also do it one-on-one. -on -one. That's awesome. So, so yeah. in, in, your, in your journey, um, mm -hmm. so what kind, of, what kind of happened? What were you feeling? What ended up really changing from, you know, being, having crazy things happen that you didn't expect it um, in, in our, to really yeah. reaching the point where you're like, no, actually... I'm now Googling how to tell my friends I don't drink. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the getting pregnant part didn't slow me down. I wish I could say it did. Um, what, what slowed me down and, and actually made me look and change was something physical. So I began to have debilitating anxiety. Mm -hmm. And that is really bad if you're standing up in front of a group of like a couple hundred people a night. So when that happened, I couldn't go to work. And if I couldn't go to work, I wasn't getting paid. And I saw, I'm like, oh, this is how you become homeless. This is how you lose your car. This is how you lose your life. Mm -hmm. And it could happen really quick. Mm -hmm. really, really quick. Um, so that happened. And then I was just kind of sitting with myself. I'm like, you know, you seem to have it all. Like people think you're really cool. Like you're a DJ that in itself sounds impressive, right? You know, you live in LA, you have this great apartment, you have the, da, 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 da. I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. I was so, so beyond depressed. And I think that right there, then and there, admitting that, that is what started all the good stuff. Just the, just the realization that you had everything on the surface, but weren't happy. Yeah. 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 That, I mean, that really mirrors my experience. I was, you know, same thing, like great job, great home, great family. And then just being like, wow, I, I have gotten everything I thought I ever wanted to make me happy. And now I'm not. Yeah. So did you ever I'm feel, did you ever feel, I mean, this is going to sound kind of funny, but like, I felt like guilty. Yeah. Yeah. I felt guilty that like, I didn't maybe work as hard to get all this. And like, why did I deserve all this to some extent? I don't know. Does, did you ever feel that way? I think for me, like it wasn't as much guilty because I didn't feel like I worked hard or something, but guilty because I knew, and I still feel this by the way, because I don't think that, I do think that stopping drinking was the linchpin for me in terms of anxiety and definitely like my depression and stuff. I've been able to get off all my medications, but I mm -hmm. still am anxious. I still can be like anxious enough like yesterday 
I was, you know, and it, it would come in bouts and, you know, it was around the time of the month and it was like, I was anxious mm. enough to like puke my guts out. Like I felt, I didn't, but it felt like that physical thing that just needed to get up and out. And it was like, yes. so that I'd meditated three times and I'd gone on a walk and I'd done all this stuff and exercised and, and I still just was like sitting with it. Yeah. And so it, it still exists. But in those moments, I think we can have this tendency to pile on blame and shame for our feelings and guilt and be like, look around you. You're in this, you know, great place with this fish on the wall. Like, how can you be happy? You know what I mean? Like, what's yeah. wrong? Like, why, why can't you be happy? And right. I think that that definitely, especially when I was drinking, exacerbated it. And when I started to realize, and I'm, I'm actually really curious about your experience, because when I started to realize, well, alcohol might not be the duct tape holding it all together. It might be the thing pulling it all apart. It was almost mm. like, okay, another hope. Because then if I reach that milestone of stopping drinking, then maybe I'll be happy. And then yeah. even after stopping drinking, when you realize, wow, life isn't the goal is not happiness. Yes. <laughs> it's not yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as you change yeah. that trajectory and yeah. like make room for so much more acceptance of everything and the whole spectrum of emotions, mm -hmm. oh, okay, then then things get interesting because even in the stopping drinking, it was another, um, I've heard it called a future gate. Like if I get through this okay. future gate of this career, of this family, of this yeah. job, of this apartment, of this house of sobriety is my next future gate. And then yeah. I get through it and then I'm like, well, crap, I still have really anxious days. What's wrong? Right, oh, right, well, right. nothing's wrong. This is just how right. life works. Oh, yeah. okay. that's a different conversation. I mean, don't you just get anxious about thinking about the future, like living in the future? That makes me anxious. Like even today, like I had so many freaking appointments lined up and I'm like, okay, this, 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 and this, I'm like, I just got to go and take it like one person at a time, one hour at a time. If I get even like half an hour deep in, ahead of myself, I'm like, doo -doo 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 -doo. like I start waking out. <laughs> I need to just chill. Yeah. You know, it, it sounds so much easier. So hard. Like that, I mean, I used to, um, the first time I really, uh, have you read Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now? No, but I, I think I gave it to my grandma. That's very okay. Well, you would you would like it. It's okay. a really good book, even though okay. you put it in the grandmother category in your head. Yeah, yeah. You would really I, like gotta, it. I just got it for Costco or something. Um, <laughs> it's it's excellent. And okay. the things that it said in there, and I think it was in that book, but anyway, it's a good book no matter what. But it was basically mm -hmm. like, okay, just a few times a day, set mm -hmm. your alarm. And I used to just literally have to set my alarm and just set your alarm and just be where you are just for 30 seconds. Like just yeah. be and ground yourself and be like, okay, here I am. I'm sitting here. It's actually sunny out. It's a fall day. I'm talking to Jessica. We're on this call. This is, this is where we are. This is cool. Yeah. And like really makes the argument that like all the problems are either in the past or in the future. Like they're not, like if you ask yourself in this very moment right now, what's mm -hmm. wrong? It's very rare that there's something right now wrong. Usually yeah. it's what you're thinking about what's happening. And that, anyway, that book really helped. Not that anything is a solution. And I think that's the biggest lesson for me right yeah. now is that we're, if we look for a destination or a solution, that's mm -hmm. not it. This is a journey that we get better and better at and we find more and more joy and we find more of a spectrum of emotion actually in our sobriety than we yeah. even did otherwise because alcohol like homogenizes things it makes things the same it feels the same to be drunk at a sporting event or djing a concert or you know at a mommy play date yeah <laughs> then it, absolutely it like it just feels the same so then all of a sudden you take that away and then you have this huge spectrum of emotions and allowing for those is really interesting yeah. um i was going to ask you so did you figure out that that you because now i mean there's lots of articles and mm -hmm. stuff, but you have to dig for them. But how did you figure out the relationship between alcohol and anxiety? Um, okay. I was actually using beer in the morning, maybe a little bit before 10 a.m. No, it was like 10 a.m. Um, because, oh my God, so sorry. I thought I turned that off. Um, stop. Ooh. 
Okay, there. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I was using beer to counteract my anxiety. And I was using it to like calm me down. And then and it worked. Yeah. It worked for a couple months. And then it didn't because my body was trying to tell me bigger messages. And I felt like, you know, as, as, as much as I was trying to like bury stuff down and keep, you know, kind of everything under wraps. And so I could just carry on and do what I had to do and do my gigs and make my rent. Um, I thought that I was doing okay, but my body was like, no, dude, like, no, we tried to tell you once we kicked you twice. We are now going to drag you behind a truck because you don't listen. You do whatever it takes to get your attention. And thank goodness, by the way, but it's not yep. painful in the process. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, it could have been, like I said, it could have been way worse. I could have easily seen like how I could have been homeless. Easy, easy. It's like, you and know, so I missed like a couple gigs. Like, I'm done. I'm out. Um. So what I did was I kind of took this list and I made a list of all the things that made me happy or brought joy into my life. Not necessarily happy, but anything that kind of like turned me on, got me excited. Um, the list was a little barren. <laughs> uh, so that was interesting to see. And I... I it was missing just like a lot of things like family connections, um, health was not even on the radar at that at that point, and I'm like, hey, well, I I want to be a healthy person, you know, I wanna I wanna have connections with my family. At the time, my family and I were just you know very surfacey. It was a very surface relationship, nothing deep at all. I was we were related. Let's just say that. And so I, I wanted even friendships. All my friendships were people of, at the bar. They were all drunks. So like, no, I want people of substance. And I, want, I, I just wanted all these things and I wasn't getting anywhere. And I kind of looked at the common denominator that was keeping me from getting those things. And, it, and alcohol just kind of ended up being the, the main one and it just yeah. had to go. So I'm like, okay, if I give up this little liquid, I have so much more of a chance at, attain, at uh, achieving all these other things that I want in my life. I'm getting healthier, having connections. Um, first of all, my, my mind, my state of mind, much better. Um, so where there's no really loss here you know and I think that that's the difference from when I was trying to get sober or I knew I had a problem before I was like no Jessica you can't drink that's bad like it's horrible you remember what happened when you drank last time though you know and I was always punishing myself and like saying no you can't you can't have that you're not allowed mm -hmm. but this time it was like I want to be healthy I want to have connections in my life, I don't want to drink alcohol. I have a choice. I don't want to do that. And that's what like changed. That's what just completely changed um, the perspective for me. It's so good. I love that idea of just like really looking for what, what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and having the awareness that, wow, a lot of the things on this list that, you know, you would have thought maybe when you were a child or something should be on the happiness list aren't yeah. even there. Right. And just understanding, you know, that awareness and looking at like, okay, it's um, a friend of mine, his name is Chris Wark. He wrote a book called Chris beat cancer. Mm -hmm. And the book is really all about, you know, um, health and nutrition and stuff like that. It's a phenomenal book, but he talks so much about not making rules about the bad stuff, but putting so much of the good stuff in that you don't even want the bad mm -hmm. stuff, right? Like you put so much of the good stuff into your body that your body starts very naturally rejecting yeah. what's not good for it. But that takes so much intention, but it's such a powerful way because you're coming at it from this place of like, 
okay, body, I only got you. Yep. I'm totally. going to make things with you. I'm going to take That's such a you. great way of looking at it. That's so cool. I think it's, it's exactly what you did. I think yeah. really just, you know, really saying, yeah. okay, what, what's the good stuff that I can put in, which is just the coolest. Um, so then, uh, and then I know you wrote a book, which I love the title of. So will you tell us about your book? <laughs> yes. It's called save your own damn life. Um, I am a lazy person. I don't like to take a lot of steps to do things. And I, I, you know, I love self-help books. I'm, I, I read, I, I love all these epic novel books, but it's just like, God, like, I just want to get to the point of it. <laughs> and I want, I, I wanted something that was easy, that was fun. Um, I, I found like a lot of self-help books were really <sighs> heavy. I'm like, can we not just like lighten it up a little bit here, ladies? Like, holy shit. Um, it's a book for Christ's sake. <laughs> so that's what I did. I, I wrote this, I, I wrote this book and it's four simple commitments. They're not steps. They are a lifestyle. This is like something you work into your life. They are not like crazy scientific changes that you need to make most of them you're probably doing at least one or two of them um but it was about being consistent about them so there's four commitments there is number one which is your body your physical body and number two your mind what you allow into your mind and most importantly what she is saying to you because <laughs> that can get wild uh number three is connection so connection first and foremost to yourself and then to others and then to something higher than us so i don't know if you call it god whatever some kind of spiritual being or energy whatever you may be uh just knowing that you're not the end all be all and then the fourth and final one is productivity. How are you expanding? How are you moving through this world? How are you growing? How are you evolving? And that's, that's it. Those four things you can track daily, which I do. You know, if I have a bad day or something, I, got, I sit down with myself. I'm like, okay, did I eat crappy today? A little bit that could be contributing to you know why i'm not feeling so great or did i not achieve what i wanted to do did i not send off those emails that i was meaning to send off for like three days now like let's just do it like get that productivity going or you know it could be anything but just going through those four simple cat categories just i found like all needed to be checked for me every day and i'm like oh Okay, I'm feeling pretty good. It's, it's a so good day. That you talk about productivity because yeah. so first of all, I, I just think that's the coolest. And it is um one of the categories or emotions that we like gloss over, right? Mm. The whole idea of like the universe is in this creation cycle. We're expanding, everything's creating, but we don't look at it and even right you know, in nature, things are always changing. And we yeah. are like, somehow our mind has tricked us to like, look for the end, the result, the solution. Right, 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 right. right, right. This idea that we have to continuously grow and expand. Yeah. And really in my journey, um, I had a coach and he would talk about actually the emotion of momentum, right? Mm, and okay. The emotion of momentum is he's like, it's not that like certain, you know, that human beings, he, this was his theory that it wasn't necessarily that certain human beings got sad or depressed or like a lot of these other feelings. It's, it's often that we just fell out of momentum. We were out mm -hmm. of line with okay. growth, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We don't feel like we have hope and forward progress and growth and excitement and anticipation and achievement. Those yes. things feel 
like death. They feel like depression and stagnant. Stagnant. Yeah. And so anyway, I just think what a cool thing to have that as your fourth pillar, because it is so not talked about, but it's so key. Like, what can you do to add momentum? One of the things that um, my husband and I did is we joined a Taekwondo gym because it's like, that's such a specific, like you're going for your next belt, you're going for your next tournament. There's always a specific goal and just adding in little things that are like tracking it every day. Like you said, adding in little things that are goal oriented, just put you in that state of like growth and expansion and momentum and some Absolutely. people that comes very naturally they're like vociferous they're like want everything they're like come get it give it to me and for other people we don't even know that we're that that's a need of ours right that actually right. expansion and growth and and um, productivity is a need that's that's really cool yeah I mean people it gets it gets I feel like it gets masked a lot like that's when people kind of start to be bored you know people are like oh you know well, if, I, if I, I quit drinking, like, oh, I'm so bored now. It's like, okay, no. well, you're not, you're not progressing. You're yeah. not like, there's a lot of stuff going on out there. It's right. 2019. <laughs> <laughs> like, true. holy smokes, girl, let's go. So yeah. That's awesome. So let me ask you, um, I, have, I have three more questions for you. So first of all, yeah. we talked early on about the wiki, the wiki with like the two dudes who were like, uh, you know, I'm not drinking cause I want to, <laughs> cause I have to run a marathon tomorrow. So, yes. so what are your kind of best tips for somebody who's like, okay, so I stopped drinking. Now I, I have to tell my friends and I don't mm-hmm. want to lie and I'm not a runner. So <laughs> what do I okay. do? <laughs> I mean, I straight up said, I don't feel good when I drink. I do really stupid things. Not drinking makes me feel better. Mm-hmm. I always say that when, if I go out and people are like, oh, you don't drink. I'm like, no, I'm much cooler not drinking. That's so cool. Me. I love but that. I, you know, it's like, it's not like a daunting thing. It's not like a, I don't say it from a, a lack perspective. You know, it's right. like, oh, I can't drink. That, that sentence right there is going to make anybody get you a drink because you sound like you're in pain right and i think right. that's oh yes you can just have yeah, yeah 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 yeah. that's like saying like someone on a diet who's eating a salad and is like i can't have pasta i'm on a diet mm-hmm. you want to give her a piece of your pizza and your pasta because she it just how she says it sounds miserable, right? Right. You want to make her feel better. And which that's ironically- what people, we do. We do as people. We, we genuinely, I believe, I think we want to help each other, mm-hmm. you know, and I think we want everyone to, to, to be okay and to not feel like they're in a lack state. But if you present yourself in the lack state, that's what you're going to get. I love that because, you know, when you say, oh, I just feel better when I'm not drinking, then the natural instinct for you to feel better isn't to push a drink on you. It's like, oh, that's cool. And actually when you say it from a state of like abundance and gratitude and like, yeah, this is good. This is an ownership instead of timidity and lack, like you're saying. um, And yeah, oh, I just can't drink anymore. I overdid it. Or, you know, I'm not drinking tonight. I'm on a break because I drank too much before. Or, you know, my friends all think I need to cut back, whatever it is. And you put that out there. Yeah. People are going to want to rescue you and help you somehow. And when you put out, I I love that. I think that's great. And I love the simplicity and the honesty of it too, because the truth is what I've noticed is, um, you know, this, this conversation now doesn't even, I mean, doesn't even I don't even know, like it doesn't even, it's not, it's such a non-issue. Like go out to, uh, we went to neighbors recently, probably two months ago and new neighbors, we hadn't met them before. And they're yeah. like, you know, what do you guys want to drink? And we're like, oh, we don't drink. And they're like, oh really? Like never? And we're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> What's the end of the conversation? No. And like, never. Oh, maybe they had questions. And if they felt like they wanted to ask us, we would have answered, but I'm yeah. like, I don't know. I, like, <laughs> I'm done with that conversation. And, you yeah. know, and it was just like a, if you make it a non-issue, it can most of the time, with some exceptions, truly become a non-issue, you know? Yeah. Which is so cool. Oh, I am, I think I'm like, I wear a sign that just says like, ask me about being sober today. Uh, <laughs> because I also wear, um, 
I, I made this little, you know, those like name necklaces that have your name and like script or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mine says sober. Awesome. And so I wear that everywhere. And especially at the dog park, people are like, oh, and it always strikes up a conversation. And That's it's really always cool. like, oh, I've been either I've been thinking of getting sober, my sister's cousin, my friend at work. Everyone has been affected by alcohol, addiction, mm -hmm. substance abuse everyone's been affected yeah and like i don't see the harm in talking about it and actually i encourage it i am so down to talk to whoever whenever i mean especially not when i'm sleeping but like i am down to talk about it any time i have no no boundaries there that's so good so speaking of yeah. that where can people where can people find you mm, yes uh, a sober girls guide.com and then Instagram is my main jam and I am at a sober girls guide um, and the podcast is on iTunes and Spotify and again that's a sober girls guide that's so awesome and yeah your Instagram is great you post lots of really valuable stuff so thank I appreciate you it. Um, thank and you. then so last question for you Jessica yeah. like if you had to go back in time to the girl who accidentally got pregnant and who was DJing and who was full of anxiety and tell her about what life is like now, what would you tell her? Oh God, get off of him. Um. <laughs> step one. <laughs> yeah, step one. Don't go out on Halloween. Don't go to weird dudes' hotels rooms. Just don't. Um, I would say just to stop fighting. Mm. Stop fighting it. I promise you there is something so much bigger than this little racket you're, you're doing right now. There's so much bigger than even you out there. And God, just, just hold on. But just stop, like, let go. It's okay. I don't know if that even made sense. No, but <laughs> totally sense. I, I completely understand. I, I feel like that's such an important message is just like, we're trying so desperately to hold it all together ourselves, right? And mm -hmm. just to make it all, and we're doing the best we can with the tools we have, which just happen to be alcohol. And then we see that alcohol actually is hurting us. And it's so hard to even think about letting it go because what else is there? What's left? You know, you don't know. It's, it's that yeah. old adage of like, you have to take a step off the cliff and not know that there's going to be a bridge, you know, and there is, and it is bigger and it is better on the other side, you know, yeah. everything opens up. It That's really, really, cool. really does. So cool. Well, thank you so much. It's been so much thank fun. You. And yeah, I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, are you looking to connect with like-minded people? Sometimes maybe you feel like as someone who knows all this information from the snake in mind or the alcohol experiment that you're living in a world of muggles and people just don't speak your language. That is why I created The Exchange. The Exchange is an online community where we meet face-to-face, -face, live video calls multiple times a week with people from all over the globe just to connect, to have somewhere you are seen and you're heard and you feel less alone and really that you can give back and get the support you need. So if this sounds great to you, check it out at thisnakedmind.com backslash exchange. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast as it truly helps the message reach somebody who might need to hear it today.